so excited to have our friend Jake Mangum in studio, in the Bank Plus studio. Show is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. Bundle your car and home and save with your local Farm Bureau Insurance agent. The show is also driven by your next Ram truck at Mack Hike in Flowood. MacHikeFlowood.com. Uh, Jake Mangum now with the Miami Marlins. We're all hoping um, that he gets to the big show. He's already been to AAA, which is incredible in itself, and has been working out in the offseason in Startville, Mississippi, where he became uh, uh, an All-American. And two Super Regionals, two CWSs, Jake Mangum in the house. Did Was there a difference uh, in your junior year and senior years or sophomore and junior year at MSU as far as people recognizing you? Which year did that kind of happen? No, oh, as, as you, I, uh, I mean, it's it, it's for just about everybody on the baseball team. Whenever yeah. you're there, he's it's, being humbled. Like, I mean, he, he doesn't he, like to talk. He was about the himself. SEC uh, hit king. Hit king. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Well, he he won the batting crown. That's it. As a freshman. As a freshman. <laughs> so I know Jake is like everybody knows the baseball team, and to some extent, he is correct. People do recognize baseball players because their faces are in sure. front of the camera, you right? You can actually see them. Correct. We can't see the football players. Correct. And we feel like we're only three feet away from them when you're around duty. That's Noble. a good point. You feel like you're you could reach out and touch the player, and that's a that's a crazy feeling. But when, when Jake lying. is on deck, he's you're right he's there. lying. People recognized him differently. Than, it's okay. People recognize Tanner Allen, Rowdy Jordan, Jake Mangum differently than they recognize. Bullpen, you don't have to bullpen say. players right. see. Exactly. We'll move on from that. He yeah. didn't want to do that. All right. <laughs> Jake Mangum on the out of bounds show. Um, Gerangelo. Yeah. He's. Tell me about him. Uh, I mean, the whole team. Like, this is this is the most impressive freshman class I've probably ever seen. It, Dakota like, Jordan and all yeah, that. Yeah, like the Dakota Jordan is he, that, that's that's special. A special pure talent. And um, you know, Durangelo, uh Mershon, I I'm forgetting so many freshmen, but like that's that's a special high group. Phil, I mean the yeah. list goes. Yeah, high Phil, yeah. Hubbard Hubbard, yeah. Uh, it's there's a lot of guys that are gonna be, you know, special talents there and um you know, and they got some JUCO talent too that came in. They got some transfer talent that came in. I'm really excited to see this baseball team. I've watched them play this year um, in the scrimmages at practice. I've practiced with them, a, you know, a little bit here and there. Um, that's a really good team. Uh, I'm excited to see what they got. For, um, and and it, it, they open up in February with a tough schedule. I mean, I know they open up with that. VMI with a three game set, but they got. Louisiana Monroe, Southern Miss, Arizona State in February. Are they doing the Frisco Classic again? They're going to Dallas. That's They're going the first to Dallas week of March. You're right. Um, Brutal. That's a, that's a tough opener. Um, so we're gonna see what they got pretty quick. Yeah. And and I don't know what the weekend rotation will be if Durangelo will be weekend or not. But even if he's not weekend, you still have ULM and Southern Miss in February midweek game. So it's not like, I mean, you're going to need you someone to roll out there on Tuesday night and, and pitch. Um, so it, I, I, I think it's going to be a really good team. And offensively, man, they, they got Hunter Hines. Uh, yeah, that's crazy pop. Um, you know, Kellum's led, back. led better special uh, Kellum, um, Hunter Hines. I mean, they, they got, they're going to, they're going to have a full lineup, like, like a full lineup that can swing it. What's it like, uh, Gerangelo, you know, you've seen mm-hmm. almost everything in baseball uh, in the major leagues and at SEC, but seeing a guy pitch like that. You just don't see it. From the left I mean, hand to the I've right. I've never, never seen it. I've never seen it in person. Uh, um, you, you, I've seen it on videos on Twitter, but, uh, you know, that's the first time I've seen it. And it, it, he's over 90 from both sides. That's crazy. Crazy. And, and you watch though in like 20, 30 years though, like there's going to be a bunch of people doing it. Okay. I, I, I say that, but that's just a, that's a you know, shot in the dark. But you know, with how talent's going nowadays, like every generation just gets better and better. Right. It, it just does because training gets better. You know, you know, just people get bigger, uh, more this, hours, you yeah. Know, at more 9, hours, 11, yeah. Like, years old. Now you have so many guys like just, just playing sports, focusing on sports, and yeah, it's 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 crazy. But um, you know, and now you're gonna have a you know a bunch of Mississippi people like that really pay attention to college baseball, see this dude do it. 
Right. And I bet they're going to try. There's a lot of people that are going to yeah, try to yeah. do it going That's forward. Good point. And, uh, we'll see. But no, he's the first I've ever seen, and and he's over 90 from both sides. Um, right hand is definitely a harder throwing. Left hand is a little slower, like Blake said. And, uh, you know, yeah, he's good, though. I, I stood in on a bullpen. It, it's it's special stuff. Wow. Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds show. What about – so not many guys walk in the league as true freshmen and have, you know, an insane amount of success. You did. Uh, you did describe what it was like early, but you got thrown in the mix. You figured it out, and you had – uh, you know, an awesome year uh, is Dakota Jordan. I mean, do you think he could play and, and perform early? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, man, it's, it's, it's the game of baseball. It's the same game you've always played. The talent gets better. It's the same way in pro ball. I mean, it's just every level you go up, you got to just figure out what's different about it. And um, the difference of high school and college is just, there's more pressure. There's more, more eyes on you. There's, but you know the guys that can handle that, they'll succeed for a long time if they can do it. If you prove you can do it at Mississippi State, you, uh, you know, just from what we're seeing with guys that go on the pro baseball, if you can do it at Mississippi State, you can do it in pro ball. No, no. I mean, there's a lot of people succeeding at Miss, like, succeeded at Mississippi State doing it in pro ball, um, and a lot of guys that weren't expected to do it in pro ball. That's the thing. Like no one thought Adam Frazier would go have the career he's having right now. No, no one. Like, no scouts thought Adam Frazier would go out and be an all-star. Um, you know, he – I mean, there's so, too many professional baseball names to start dropping, but, you know, that's just the one that always stands out to me because I love his game. But, you know, it's just – for these freshmen, they just got to understand that it's the same thing. It's the same exact game. Just, you know, uh, it, it is a learning curve, but there's no reason you can't figure it out quick. So, you mentioned mindset earlier in the show, and – Cohen told us that, for the most part, more times than not, the difference in making it in MLB is between the ears. That uh, everybody's thousand talented. percent. Okay. Yeah, I mean, in pro ball, everybody's there for a reason. Everyone's right. talented. You know, and, and that's, you know, you see so much talent in college, then you get the pro ball, then you start seeing guys, like, that just were just born with just insane amount of power and insane amount of speed, insane amount of, you know, a fastball that comes out. It, it's the same in, you know, in, in the, in the sec and, and I mean, heck at every level, really, I, there's always going to be people that are talented and, but the guys that work hard, the guys that, you know, have the mindset, have the best chance of succeeding for a long period of time. And, you know, it, the old saying, like, hard work doesn't guarantee anything, but it sure as hell helps. Absolutely. Um, there's no secret to that. I try and, to tell Blake that. Yeah. <laughs> See, and, and I'll, I'll, no be the, I'll be the first to tell you, if I would have, you know, taken weight training seriously in high school, I, it would have helped me a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, and y'all know the whole story in 2020 was kind of like my year of completely focusing on that. Right. Because we didn't have a baseball season, but. You know, if I could go back in time, I wish I would have worked a little bit harder in high school, you know, and that's the that's what I'm, I haven't allowed me to have since, you know, about halfway through college. I, I really started training hard in the weight room. I thought I could just hit my way to the league. It doesn't work like that. You know, it, it's it's a full thing. You know, um, being strong doesn't help you hit a baseball, but it helps you hit a baseball harder. And, right. And professional baseball really cares about how hard you hit a baseball. Sure. Um, you know, and, and you see that. Um in drafts and stuff, you can hit 400, but if you don't hit for power, they don't care. Um, but the mindset piece in baseball is everything. It's you really gotta. How, how many days do you lift a week? All season six. Um, in the end season three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds show. You can watch it right now. YouTube search Out of Bounds Sports. We would love for you to hit the. Scrub button. He joins us on the Farm Bureau Insurance guest line. Blake Scott? Yeah, we mentioned this already. Everybody's well aware of your what you did at Mississippi State. You started as a freshman. <clears throat> you end up getting the hit batting king record that year, the you know batting title that year, 408. But you had a ton of pieces around you in 2016. A lot of leaders, a lot of veteran guys. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to be the leader. You ended up being mm -hmm. a, a huge part of the offense as the leadoff guy, but you didn't have to be the locker room leader. Last year, we saw a team at Mississippi State that kind of maybe lacked that locker room leadership or just didn't have 
the steadying force. Now you've got a huge group of freshmen. You've got a lot of talent. But what would you say to someone who's trying to take that step from like Hunter Hines, who last year was a good player, but this year maybe has to be a good leader and a good player? What would you say to someone who had to kind of walk that tightrope already? Well, I wouldn't say last year they didn't have any leadership. I mean, they were a year away, year out of, and I know that that is the narrative of last year, I guess, but. Like, uh, they won a national championship the year before, so a lot of guys on last year's team know, knew what it took to win a championship. Um, but the same thing goes for this year. I mean, they got guys in that locker room that's been to Omaha a bunch and, you know, that, that went in 19, that went in 2021. 20, um, they got guys that have a ring. You know, I, a, a lot of you know a lot of guys at Mississippi State, pretty much everyone other than that one year have never won a national championship. So... Uh, you know, I'd say that they got they have experience too. I mean, you got Luke Hancock; he's the first team like true like team captain wearing a C on his chest in the history of the program. I think so. That's a, that's a big honor, and I know he's the right guy to do it. Yeah. Um, uh, Kellum Clark's third year is it's 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 kind of his year to you know take over that role, and you got a bunch of guys. Um, you know, it's just kind of where they're at right now, and. I, I like what what they're doing right now for sure as a, as a whole as a team as a coaching staff like they're going to be just fine. I think they have a great bounce back year this year and and uh, it's it's going to be good. Yeah, I think it's all about the mound. Well, I say that I, I do think majority of it. But Jake knows more than I do. If they can get that right, then they could they could do some things in May and June. Jake Mangum on the Out of Bounds Show, ESPN one hundred five nine The Zone. All right, let's switch gears for a second. We may go back to baseball. Um, we had a whole show and it was called the great steak debate. Mm -hmm. All right. And how do you like your, first of all, most everybody loves steak. And we were talking about all sorts of different things, how to cook it, all this kind of stuff. How do you like your steak cooked? I like a filet medium. Okay. We can work with that. Like, yeah, so. yeah, that's doable. If he wasn't leaving tomorrow, we could cook him a steak tonight. You cooked a great steak. Blake right. cooked a great steak last week on the cast iron skillet. That's right. It was seared medium rare. Uh, Phenomenal. Gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Compound butter. Couldn't go wrong. Uh, he made his own butter. Yeah. Can you believe that? It's a true story. It's impressive. I yeah. know. Yeah. I'm like you in the kitchen. I'm the Jake Mangum of, of the kitchen is basically what. <laughs> they call me the hit king. The oh cook king over there. Oh, my gosh. All right. Now, well, but Go the ahead. big debate was not only just how you get your steak cooked, but it was also a little bit of like, does that say something about you? So let me ask this. As someone who has lived with a lot of people from a lot of different walks of life. Oh, this is good. In baseball. Yeah. Have you ever sat down to a table like, y'all are going to eat steak, you're going to do something like that, and you're like, I can't believe this guy or person is is getting their meat cooked this way. Or did, does it speak Like, to well you? done. Yeah. Are you like, wow, this guy's crazy? Like it's beef jerky by the time it hits the <laughs> table and y'all give him a hard time, Jake Mangum? Uh, no, I mean. You don't want to give up his name. That's okay. No, I it's not. probably Tanner Allen. Not, not with. <laughs> T.A., man, he's funny. Um, you know, I guess I guess the Latin culture in pro ball is like the one thing I'd say. Like it's it's a very different type of cuisine than, than we're used to. Um like I went down to the Dominican Republic in 2019 fall. They eat their breakfast. We do breakfast better. I'll, I'll go out and say that like we definitely do breakfast better, at least from my point of view. And then, um, but man, they do lunch really, really well. They always have rice and they always have some sort of meat with it. Yeah. And that's all I ever need for lunch. Just yeah. rice and meat protein. And, yeah. It's protein carbs. And you know, that's it. And, um, uh, and they do lunch very, very well. Uh, they do it's very, very good. But they, I've, there's definitely been some some uh, Latin meals that I've had that I did not like at all. Right. There's also been some ones I've liked. Oh, um, their food is um, a lot yeah, of their so food's amazing. My last name's Mangum, and um, the most you know Latin Americans, whenever they hear that, that they always it's like call me Mangu. And uh, that, that's it. that's a Dominican dish. It's like mashed up rice and meat, and like imagine like a chipotle bowl that you make, yeah. and you just mash it up into like yeah. one big mashed potato. Okay. And you put it in a bowl. That's mango. Okay. So they always call me mango, and whenever you have mango day, they freak out, and they kind of like you know, 
Like laugh, like laugh with me. <laughs> do you now? So good. Do you speak Spanish now after playing? I don't. Minors I don't. I got a uh, Spanish for Dummies book <laughs> a couple weeks ago. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna read that I while I'm in the hotel month. room. I spent a month in Mexico. I, I took Spanish three and four. I took Spanish one and two in high school. I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Jackson I prep Spanish, baby. What's up? I, so I had to get out of college. You know, I had, so I thought we'll go to Mexico for 30 days and took Spanish three and four. Basically, we just drank Corona and tequila and had a good time. And I made two A's. It was pretty simple. Jake Mangum uh, on the Out of Bounds Show, ESPN 105.9 The Zone. Speaking of diet, protein, do you track your calories? No, I don't track my calories. I track my weight, though. I, I weigh just about every day. Um, I'm pushing 200 pounds now, uh, which is crazy. Uh, I, play, I played uh, my freshman year at Mississippi State. I was 160, 165 <laughs> pounds. Wild. I was skinny as a rail in my freshman year. Sophomore year, I gained a couple pounds. Junior year, a couple pounds. And senior year, I made a little bit of a jump. Uh, but yeah, I'm like 198, you know, 199, 197, fluctuating around there. I don't really want to hit 200. <laughs> I want to stay under that. But That's a good weight. Yeah, it's a good weight. You good like weight. where you are? 198? Yeah. yeah I, when I was training in 2020, I had a, like a big, uh, his name's Eric Cressy, big, um, big like trainer in professional sports the average weight of a major league center fielder is 199 pounds um and granted that's including aaron judge playing center field so it's a sure bit, like there's outliers there's definitely some skinny yeah. there's definitely some bigger but i've always uh, you know since then i've always just thought let's let's be let's be right around there let's mm -hmm. be right around the average weight of a center fielder and keep my speed and hit for a little bit more power and um I tell you what, hitting in uh, hitting in Florida in April is going to be a lot better than New York, uh, just in regards to weather. Wow! So, so the ball is going to fly a little bit better in April. So if I have if I don't have any more home runs and I have the last couple of years, then y'all know something's wrong. So we'll see. Hey, how how much did your dad weigh when he played at the Chicago Bears? Man, when I I don't know, I don't know. In the pictures, he looks small as heck. So <laughs> I looked him I'll up a couple that. of years ago. Looks like he hit arms every day and nothing else. So, yeah. <laughs> and I know he's listening too. So, <laughs> shout out, John Mangum, uh, Blake Scott on the. Uh, but he likes Blake Scott like, like my dad. He'll he'll like last night. He gave me three T-shirts. Like I wear. We'll you know he'll give me some clothes sometimes, vice versa. And right. you know, he gave me these shirts, and he was like, "Yeah, they don't fit me. A little tight in the chest." I was like, and he was like, "They fit you perfect though." And I was like, "All right." <laughs> All right, man. I love That's it. That's fantastic. Do we want to? Well, I have a question. Do we want to go Minshew or you got a question? I, we still we got plenty both. of time. Yeah. My question would be, we were joking about me playing disc golf and you said you didn't play disc golf, but my question would be, if you were going to play a sport Ooh. outside of baseball, which one would, and it can be something as weird as like ping pong or whatever. I know ping pong is a huge like minor league, major league baseball locker room thing. So I don't know. Is Do you have a sport that you would be like, oh, I could, I'd go pro in this sport if it wasn't putt, baseball. Putt. There you go. Putt, putt. Mini golf. Uh, like, and you can ask, you can ask Minshew, like, like, look, I'll give Gardner credit. Like we go in basketball, we'll go and do all that. And you know, my other buddies, Andrew Lula, Houston Smith, Josh, Stitt, like all, my highest, like closest friend group, we would go play putt putt a lot. And man, I, I'd kick, I'd kick their tail and, and putt putt, man. <laughs> but everything else I'm not very good at. Like I will say, like, I don't pick up things and I'm not just naturally good at them. I'm really not. And I think people think that about you. People do think you that, and that's the so very. Like, I don't tell people I'm like awful at basketball or awful at you know whatever. They don't believe it, and which is just because you know I play baseball decent, and you know, and that's decent. and that's easy. <laughs> uh, uh, and but putt putt, man, I will. I, I'm putt putt's the the one thing I've just been really good at, and I'm not that great of a golfer. Like I don't score well in golf. Did you play some in the off season? Or oh did yeah, you get, oh okay. yeah. And uh, that's the best part hit? about living and in, in, you know training in Starkville with the guys is twenty five minutes, twenty minutes from Mossy Oak and Ma Old Waverly. Mossy Oak and Old Waverly, man, those two golf courses are incredible. They are the re the refuge out here now is beautiful. Yeah, uh, you know I, I love playing golf in the off season. Starkville seasons. Country Club, they've done an amazing. Starkville job. Country Club's done an amazing job. Uh, the state golf course. Yeah, they, uh, they they amazing it. job. They redid right. it. There's just really good golf around Starkville. There is. Uh, really, really good golf. Waverly and Mossy Oak. Un, un Gorgeous. 
Hey, are, so since you went on the weightlifting kick the last four years, um, do you, I mean, can you tell in driving the golf ball too? Yes, but if I go out there and try to hit it really hard, I don't, I don't hit them straight. Yeah. So it's golf for me is just going out there and hit it straight. It's a, that's a hard sport, man. Oh, it's a very hard sport. If, if you go out there and you truly play it where it lies, you take every putt, which I've come to learn not many people do <laughs> in golf. It it is really hard to score as like to score well. Yeah, like scoring is it's crazy. It's it's crazy how hard that sport is. Like it's like watching the PGA Tour now, like four straight days of that. It's just insane. Who's the best? Uh, who's the best Mississippi? You know, you just mentioned a bunch of names you've been hanging out with the last few weeks. Yeah, who's the best golfer? Former player. I couldn't tell you, okay. man. Um, I, I didn't I, know if like somebody jumped I, I out. Play a lot of golf. Had a three, four, um, five handicap or something. All know, good. It, it's that's a tough question. I got that's a tough question. Two minutes. Let's right. switch gears. Gardner Minshew. Yeah. Your buddy. He'll be a free agent this offseason. I'm excited yep. for him because I think he's going to land in a spot where he can compete for the starting job. Mm -hmm. um, he did a hell of a job in Jacksonville when they were melting down around him. Um, he's in the Super Bowl. Have you talked to him? I haven't talked or to him since the NFC. I, I, I texted him after the NFC Championship, but he he's a guy like when it's you know, end season, he's not even on his phone at all. Yeah, like he he's. Well, we've talked a couple times throughout the year. Yeah, Facetime and stuff like that. But you know, he's locked in right now, and um, I know he's he's not starting, but man, he's one play away, one play away from playing in the Super Bowl and. Um, I know how hard he works, and I know he's going to get an opportunity somewhere. Um, I'm just really excited to see, you know, what the future holds for him. I know how hard he works. I know it's going to pay off, and uh, and I know how much he loves the game of football. Sure, and, uh, you, you, he's you know one of my best friends ever, and um, I really hope he gets a ring. Um, I hope he gets a ring, and then gets to go somewhere where he gets a fair shot at being uh, being the starting quarterback. Yeah, and. Um, and that's all you can ask for in professional sports, just just the opportunity. You, you, you just want the opportunity. 30 seconds. Did you see Will Rogers at all while you were up there? Uh, not. Never really saw him. I watched him play. Yeah. Um, uh, he'll be a fourth-year starter, man. Fourth-year starter. Like he, Doesn't he have a fifth-year eligibility? He does for COVID. Yeah, so he'll get five years of being the starting quarterback. That's – I don't know. Except – Brandon Water, that Rankin County yeah, Water. That's right. That's you're, right. Rankin you're County. Rankin County. Will's done a great job, and I, I hope they keep making the steps forward. And, uh, I, I love the Arnett hire. Absolutely love the Arnett hire. I do too. I think he's got a chip on his shoulder, and I think he's going to, I think he really loves Starkville too. Thanks for coming in. Absolutely. Best Anytime. of luck. We wish you all the success in the world. He is Jake Mangum, and he joined us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Guest Line. If you missed any of this hour, it will be on Apple Podcast and Spotify in about 30 minutes. Or you can go back to YouTube, search Out of Bounds Sports, and watch it. Thank you, Jake Mangum and his family. And uh, we will be keeping up with him throughout the season with the Miami Marlins. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday.